What is going on, guys? It is your boy TKD. Went to the here back in Plays and Swords. This is, of course, Road to PS5, the weekly podcast series about any and all things PS5 as we head towards the release of the PlayStation 5. We're so close. We're so close. And with me, of course, my luxurious co host, The Arachne. How are you doing, good sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Bro, we are like 33 days away. We are almost at the one month mark, bro. Bro. It is Saturday on Monday. It'll be exactly a month away. Bro. You up Let's go. I'm so excited, man. Yesterday, I was at work thinking like, man, somewhere out there, you know, perhaps, perhaps in a warehouse or perhaps on a plane or perhaps on a ship. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? My PS5 is out there somewhere, you know, just, 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 just waiting to come home, you know? you love to see it. But this is, of course, Road to PS5. You can catch the show here on YouTube.com to this place in source, as well as your favorite podcast service every Sunday by hitting the anchor link down below to find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, and any other major podcast service, or by just searching Play in Source Podcast Feed. To support the show, you can, of course, like and subscribe, as well as become a member of the channel by hitting the join button or the link, or the, or the link in the description to become a member. Wait. Where am I going? Uh, I, yo. You know, like, skiers, when they're, like, going downhill and they just wipe out? I wiped out completely on this readout. I'm going to pick it up again because you can be a Prince tier or a King tier member for $1 or $5 respectively and give you access to all different kinds of channel badges, emotes, as well as shoutouts and all PSS content just like the homies. And I'm pulling up the updated list because I was reading out the other ones for a long time. Give me a second. Owen, Arachnite, Chungi, Caleb Kaiser, and the homie Tab. I fucking love Tab, by the way. You know, Tab, Tab sometimes pulls up the streams. I'm a I'm a big fan of Tab. Shout out to the homie. Real ones out. Make sure y'all become members down below in the description. Or hit that join button if you're on YouTube. And, of course, you can follow us on other platforms such as our Discord server down below and our Twitter as well in that description. But, Arachnite. How you doing? How you feeling on this on this Saturday morning? I'm feeling good. Feeling feeling hyped. I don't know. I feel a I feel low energy rack night tonight. You know what I'm I mean today, not tonight. You know what I'm saying? We gotta we gotta pump it up. You know, just like the uh, seminal <laughs> the seminal birthday place that you've never been to as a child. Um, Let's do a weather update because you know we're in. <laughs> why are we doing a weather update on the Road to PS5 cop? Uh, Road to PS5 podcast. Not sure. I got but three words. What do we got? It's fucking hot, dude. It's not that hot though. It's definitely cooling down. It's bro. 95 degrees. That's the high. That's not that bad for us, bro. Come on, are you serious, bro? We are used to like 115. I own no pairs of shorts. I hate shorts. All I have I would are rather wear jeans them. and sweatshirts. Look, I, I think we have just unveiled a very similar commonality with us. Too, right? <laughs> In terms of, listen, I much prefer colder weather fits than hot weather fits. You think I'm saying? Does that makes sense? Yeah. Like, I would rather go out in some, in some boots, in some jeans, a jacket. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to be layered up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like to be comfy when I'm outside. You know what I'm saying? Um, but as opposed to that, I do like the feeling of a hot, hot fucking day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do like the heat. You know what I'm saying? But I I don't like the clothing I have to wear for the heat to make it bearable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, could not be sense? me. Could not be me. <laughs> I, I hate the heat. <laughs> I have definitely grown to like it. Because, like, I have been in, like, extreme cold and like snow environments like overnight and stuff like that whatever and like when i used to date someone that lived like three hours no like two hours north of us in flagstaff arizona you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and when it would snow there i was fucking miserable bro like snow sucks man. snow is not the way i would much rather deal with 115 heat in arizona than snow any day you know what i'm saying yeah i don't know i just i like I love cold weather. I like rain. I also like, yeah. I like no, oh my god. Rain rain in Arizona is the best. Oh my god, everyone's happy. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Come on. Rain, overcast, cold winds. That's my kind of day. 
my perfect kind of day is specifically a Saturday morning when you wake up and it's overcast, right? A light breeze, we'll call it what, like the high will say like 65, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of a chilly day, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's my, because then it's like, yo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay inside, I'm going to make a coffee, I'm going to play some fucking video games. It's the best, the best, you know what I'm saying? But besides all that, even though it's not cold and not 65 degrees and not all that good stuff, we have been playing games. Arachnid, what have you been playing this week? Uh, a lot of Crash 4. I honestly, mm. like, midway through my my uh, playthrough, like, I was doing every level to perfection, and I was making no progress, because I would spend, like, mm. 30 minutes on, or to an hour on each level, like, trying Also, to... sorry, I just... No, no, what were you going to say? I was going to bring just a disclaimer. If you guys hear any noise in my background, it is indeed my washer washing my pillows. And uh, it's being violently loud, so I don't think it's picking up on the mic. But just in case, that's the culprit. It'll, it'll, it'll end soon. But please continue on with your crash board. Oh uh, no, yeah, I can't even hear it. So you're good. Perfect. Um, so I was like, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm just gonna play the game. So I, I kind of abandoned the 100% mentality until like after, and then I was gonna decide whether or not I wanted to do it. And. It's night and day. I started getting annoyed at the game and not having fun by doing everything at 100% and then progressing, like, one level. And then once that was all the way done, then the next level and then the next level. Right. Like, I I spent, like, an hour on one of the Tana levels. And it was rough. It just wasn't fun. Like, it wasn't fun. But it was like, all right, I don't know where one of the boxes is. I have to watch a video on YouTube to where the box is. Then I can go back and do the level. Oh, I died. Do it again. Oh, I died. Do it again. Can you get the platinum in modern mode, or is it only yeah. in classic? You can get it in modern, but I think you have to replay it in classic. Okay, gotcha. So here's the thing I want to tell you, right, Arachnid. I, 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 I humbly commend you for going for that plat first run, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely commend you for that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're a you're a level of tier that is just not me, right? And I think you're sharing similar sentiments to other people that tried slash did uh, Platinum the Insane Trilogy in terms of like the game really shows it's broken. Not, not, oh, I guess brokenness in like Crash 1 to be like specific, but the other games like it really shows a different side of Crash that if you just play it like me, where I just played it through, you know what I'm saying? Typically, you know, just, just your average playthrough, nothing too wild, right? Um, I definitely have a different takeaway than what you might have, right? I do gotta tell you, are you still committed to the platinum? Um, honestly, no. Okay. It's okay. because it's like you have to do thirty-eight perfect runs. Thirty-eight. Oh, so not all of them? Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them. Right, 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 right. So it's like you have to get all the gems, hidden gem, all the boxes. You can't die at all. Like, if you die, you have to go through a 30-second to 45-second loading screen and do it again. Gotcha. And gotcha. If, okay. you, if you die in the very beginning, that's another 45-second loading screen. Yeah, that's that's something that a lot of people have been saying, and definitely I've been saying as well. I've been forgetting to mention it in impressions, but I do have to say that Crash 4 loading screens are begging for next gen. Like, yeah. oh my god. They are really, really long. Really, really long. And, like, I think what, what makes it worse is that, like, it's a it's just a black screen, and it's like, man, like, even though I'm, I'm not particularly looking at loading screens every time there is one, like, it's just on my phone or whatever, you could, you know... Put a little some some. I don't know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like a little. Yeah. I digress. But I have to warn you, Rack Knight. So have you not beaten the game yet? I have. I'm good. Bro, that second to last level, Rack Knight, where you have all four masks. Yeah. And you're. Oh my god. Oh my god, Rack Knight. Oh my. I have. What? Like that has been the closest thing this year that I've played that even rivaled God of War one. For in terms of like difficulty at the end of the game the difficulty spikes like the um like what, like what you were saying is like 
going for a platinum or like playing a game like not in the way that the developers intended in a way of saying it's like oh they want you to play in like normal difficulty or hard difficulty really just shows some of the games like like faults like at least that's what i've discovered in a lot of games that i played like on the hardest difficulty like first run it's like um like Jedi Fallen Order. It's like there were some like, there was some weird stuff with that. Like, give right. me God of War is garbage. That difficulty is garbage. Right, right, right. I but, I haven't been that angry in a game in a long time because uh, I was fighting the Valkyries and I would get one shot no matter what I was wearing or how high of a level I was. Yeah, that is insane. That is insane. <laughs> that is crazy. But I gave up. But like, I gave up on that. So, like, for real, like, how long did it take you to get past that, like, ending third part of the second to last mission in Crash 4? Do, do you, you know what I'm talking about? Where, like, yeah. you have to use all the masks and, like, you have to time it perfectly and you have to do these specific, you know, jumps with the, uh, with the purple mask and all that. Dude, the purple mask sucks. Listen, oh, I mean, no, like I, I don't think it sucks. It's just like, man, it's too floaty. They, it's too floaty. It's yeah, but like, I guess, I guess that's the point, low key, right? I mean, yeah, you know. no, it's just like, I don't know. Like sometimes, like I'll barely move the stick, and uh, then I'll just like go flying off the area that I was supposed to. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But I honestly didn't have too much trouble with it since I had been dealing with, you know, doing every level perfectly. Yeah, pro okay. I had a lot of practice. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Because, like, I've been seeing a lot of people play like me normally and say that, like, oh, my God, Crash 4 is, like, something insane, whatever. And, like, I'll only say that the second to last level is actually, like, insane. That I felt. But everything else, I feel like, you know, there was some, I guess, like, Spikes. things that... Yeah, like, there's, like, I wouldn't even call it a spike. Like, there was, like, definitely some, like, difficulty hills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely, second to last level is, like, legitimately insane. Right? Like, that one was, like, oh, my God. Like, it was after a while, I was just, I kept trying it. Right? Yeah. And, and I was trying to see what Toys for Bob was trying to communicate to me on what to do with these different masks to get to the end of this level. Right? And then once it clicked, I'm, like, there's no way. There is no way that they actually want me to do, like, what I think they want me to do, and it was. And it was insane. But, at the end of the day, what I'll say for Crash 4, above all else, is that it's some damn fun. I don't it know if you fun. had a lot of fun with your with your Platinum run. Like, I know there's a lot of frustration there on, on your end, for sure. But, at least for me, throughout, I had a ton of fun with the game. I think it's great. I, I think it's great. No, yeah, I definitely had a good time with it. Like... I, I, I thought it was fun. Like, I thought it was a good time. Like, it wasn't anything revolutionary, but it wasn't trying to be. Yeah, I mean, I I really... I think definitely the the highlight for me is the mass and how the game design and the game levels were built to take advantage of those masks in, like, really intuitive and really interesting ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think those... Like, what I was saying on Gamescast, and, like, maybe this might be, like, a bit... Of, like a bit of like a hyperbolic type of statement but looking back on crash 4 right i really think that they could do like a crash maker with these masks you know what i'm saying like um i think that like people could like make really really cool levels just solely based off of these masks and their different um you know abilities that change the overall meta of crash and like just 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 add different add just just add a different layer of complexity to a given crash level that goes beyond just the jumping and sliding of just classic crash you know what i'm saying like i really think that they did a very very good job with incorporating these masks and i think that they really showed a lot of cool design that they were able to pull off you know what i'm saying like like it's far and away my favorite crash out of the original one two and three off of uh at least i played the insane trilogy recently yeah all the way through leading up to crash 4 so definitely crash 4 was 100 my my most favorite crash for sure Out of um, those three. and i think the masks have a lot to do with it you know yeah agreed i it, it, 
I had a lot of fun with it. It was definitely a good time. But what it's was a good time, and it was about time. It was about time. But what wasn't that great of a time? It's quadrants. Let's talk about it. All right. Do you want to go first, or you want me to go first? Uh, I'll go first. My thoughts are pretty pretty short. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was really excited to play the game on release. I played Crash 4 for a few hours. I hit the gym, came back. Then I was like, yeah, I'll um, I'll play some Squadrons. I booted it up. I put, I picked Ace difficulty because I'm an idiot. And I was doing the uh, prologue. And so it's like, all right, yeah, these guys are melting my, sh melting my shields all the time. So that's not fun like I just kept getting blown up over and over it's like you know what I'll I'll swallow my pride and so I went down to like normal difficulty just for my first playthrough right and then the game got too easy because like, all right this isn't fun either so I went up to the next difficulty and the jump between difficulty three to four is night and day it's like okay three is too easy and four is not fun so whatever I just I was like, I'll do baby difficulty and just play the game for the story. And then I wasn't too into it. And the flying didn't feel super great on PC. Like, it felt a little weird. Because, like, you had to control everything with your mouse. Like Okay, the, so you're on... Right, you're on mouse and keyboard. Yeah, so I was like... It didn't feel bad, but it didn't feel great. Like, it still felt kind of disorienting. So I was like, alright, that's fine. Whatever. And then, like, I was... I was like three hours in and it's like and I put the game down went to bed next day I got get back on my computer it's like I should play squadrons I don't want to play squadrons and it's like all right I'll force myself to play squadrons I paid money for it I should play it I played it for like 30 minutes it's like you know what whatever I don't care so I went right. into the multiplayer I did. I was not having fun, so it's like you know what. I still fit within the Steam refund policy, right? So I uh, sent my sent in a ticket. They refunded my game, and then I bought Payday Two DLC, and then that's what I've been playing. <laughs> nice. So All right. All yeah. Right. No. Not I'm very disappointed with Squadrons. Here's the thing. From the top, just a preface. Obviously, Iraq, that you are a big Star Wars fan. Yeah. Right. So am I. I'm a giant Star Wars fan, right? So I was very high for this game going into it. Um and I will say overall, right? I did enjoy my time with Squadrons, right? I I did enjoy it. I I I I'll walk away saying that like I really liked it. You know what I'm saying? But in specific, I would say I loved Crash 4. See how, see how there's a there's a little discrepancy there, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I was I was expecting to really like Crash Four and love Squadrons, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I just think that you know I think definitely my favorite part is the gameplay. I, at least I know that you weren't really fond of it, but I loved flying in a Tie Fighter or flying in like an Interceptor or an X Wing, etc., Y Wing, whatever, and like learning uh, like how all these different ships feel and everything from like a control standpoint. I do think that the game would feel a lot better if you had a controller or or played on like a like stick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I think definitely. I mean, hey, if you don't have it, you don't have it. It is what it is. But like, I definitely feel like I got a lot better of an experience like using analog sticks on the controller and controlling it that way because I think that the ships controlled really great overall. I feel like the feel of the different weapons and like how each ship kind of lent itself to like a class based thing and like a class based shooter like overwatch or whatever like it it you you can see like where they were going for it. and i think overall it 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 really works right what happens with squadrons is that everything else around it falls apart in comparison at least for me personally right, right. um and like i hate that in like the trailers they showed off Hera from from Rebels, and it's like, damn, for real? Like, you're gonna throw her in? And like, we're gonna guess, like, for real? Like, what is that gonna tell about, you know, the, the like, post stuff of Rebels, the actual show? Uh, and they didn't really double down on that. 
you know, there's some cool like characters that pop up that are from original trilogy, you know what I'm saying? But like it just doesn't really hit that hard. Um I think overall just like the the story kind of falls flat and it's like it 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 feels like a okay series of episodes of like rebels or clone wars you know what i'm saying yeah and like that's just not what i was hoping for obviously right like i wanted to be like season seven of clone wars that was like phenomenal you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um but yeah so i just think the story definitely did it for me did you also find it weird how you couldn't actually like move your character when you weren't in the ship and that you did like a vr type of control scheme yeah that was that was a little weird right i was like this is odd like this is very odd like and it almost and i think off of that right i think definitely this game was meant to just be in vr and they were like hey we can't just do just vr you know what i'm saying like we like gotta let people that don't have vr play it too but i definitely feel like coupled with that right i definitely think that number one the prime way to play this game is in the vr is with a flight stick if you can if not with a flight stick then with like a controller you know what I'm saying? Like, but I think 100% the format to experience quadrants in the best way possible is for sure in VR, right? Um, and I think that's pretty telling by the design and everything. But I did a little bit of multiplayer. I was killing it in multiplayer. Um, so I have really no complaints about about multiplayer, honestly. And I only played like a match or two, so I don't really have that big of a opinion on that per se. But I was killing it like Poe Dameron mm -hmm. in multiplayer. You know what I'm saying? So overall, I mean, Squadrons, I liked it. It's it's 40 bucks. I'm not upset about the purchase. If it was $60, we would have a much bigger discussion here. Um, but I think definitely if you're a fan and you're cool with waiting, I would say wait until Black Friday. This game is for sure going to be like 20 bucks on Black Friday. Like, I really doubt it's not going to be 20 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think definitely this is going to be like a $20, uh, you know, brand new purchase during Black Friday. I said just pick it up there. If you're a really big Star Wars fan, because I feel like even if you're like a base Star Wars fan, I think you can still have fun with this game. It's just it definitely temper your expectations. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that's all I'll that's all I'll end my squadron stuff. You know? I digress. Now, Arachnite. I do want to announce one thing to the people. May I? Well, you may. All right. It may come as a surprise to a lot of people. All right. Of course, we do host Road to Miles Morales that goes up on Saturdays at 10 a.m. By the time you are hearing this, Spider-Man Miles Morales Episode 2 is live. Make sure you go check that out on the channel and on podcast services all around. Where we're at, you can find it there. But I have looked at my trophies, right? Which we will talk about trophies later on in this whole podcast. But I did come to terms with that man. I still have not gotten a platinum. For Spider-Man PlayStation 4. You right. know what I'm saying? We've talked about and that. We did. We did. And since I'm not going to uh you know do a full playthrough again until Spider-Man 2 gets announced, right? I figured what better way to end off me probably ever playing Spider-Man on PlayStation 4. Uh with, like with going to get the platinum on ps4 so i'm working through that all right i'm at like i think like 70 percent. so like i just gotta do like a few more things i have to like do i think spectacular on like a stealth mission and uh, something else i think i think there's like two or three of those i still haven't paid respects to uncle ben which is absurd to me that i didn't do him in my initial playthrough i don't know how i missed that arachnite i'm sorry um, and there's like three zones that I have to 100% and I'll be right there. So I'm going to work on that this week. We'll see if I get it this week. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to chip away at that uh, just so I can familiar the, that way I can be more familiar with Spider-Man PS4 going into Spider-Man Remastered and seeing how it all compares. You know right. So. I Uncle Ben was my last trophy by intention. I'm going to make it my last trophy too. I, I'm going to steal your idea. Yeah. yeah. I'm asleep right here. All right. So Is that cool? Yeah, no. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think you actually do have to do an entire playthrough again. Wait, what? Uh, you need to beat the game on ultimate difficulty to get the last trophy. 
wait that's not true isn't yeah. that new game plus yeah you need uh, that's a that's a tro that's a new trophy wait that they added to the that they added to the platinum yeah like the base game no yeah. yeah sir sir don't tell me that sir don't even tell me that yeah, I think you no, do no, have no, to no. play the whole game again. <laughs> no, 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 I'll boot up my P. You know what? I'm going to investigate that. Okay, if I have to play it again, I'm not going to get the platinum. I'm going to just wait for a remastered. But I'll at least get close. Dude, that's not even. Please, please don't tell me that's true, man. Uh, Are you kidding me? I no. like when the ultimate difficulty came out. I went from a hundred percent to ninety-seven percent. Wait, I, okay, I, I, okay. Let's see, let's see. No, that's on the new game plus section, Arachnite. So it's like a. You scared me. Yes. Are you yes, sure? It's... Are you sure? Okay, look, I'm looking at it right now on my old PlayStation app. All right, Marvel Spider-Man, the base Marvel Spider-Man game. I have eighty-two percent. New game plus zero. Uh, then all the three DLCs with their own separate list. New Game Plus and the three DLCs have their own separate list. Okay. Right? Okay. Go into Marvel Spider Man. Here's what I need to do I need 100% all the districts. <coughs> I need to purchase all the suits still. Uh, I need to get spectacular or better in a Taskmaster Bomb Challenge. Oof. Right? Is that hard? No, so, not too bad. Just I need to purpose. get. I need to get spectacular or better in a Taskmaster Stealth Challenge, right? And then I need to, let's see, pay respects uh, to Uncle Ben's grave, of course. And then one more thing here. What we got? Complete all optional projects in the lab. What? I thought I thought I did that. I don't know. The but lab but that's all. Sorry. Huh? No, yeah, I was going to say the lab, the lab missions suck. But yeah, so, so, so that's all I got to do. To and then unlock B grader. Collect all trophies. So yes, it is a separate list. Okay. You you can get the new game plus plat. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It scared me, man. It scared me, bro. It scared me, dog. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> but uh I'll keep you all updated on how that goes, you know. And I'll definitely mention it, of course, more so on Miles Morales, uh, for sure. But going into the news here, we have a pretty dense a lot of things happen. You know what I'm saying, Arachnite? We had a lot of these going down with, with, with PS5. But first up here, uh, we did talk about this on last week's episode, how there was going to be a Japanese YouTuber hand-on media event um, in Japan. That went live on Sunday last week, a few hours before our episode went live. So we just talked about it. Um, I did a stream on it on the channel. We didn't do it in the middle of the night. We did do it at 8 a.m. the next day. So... You, you can check that out if you missed that. But there wasn't really a lot that we got out of here per se. But one of the 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 big things I wanted to talk to you about was the old Sony switching the X and O for Japanese uh consoles and regions in Japan. Right. So were you aware of this? I How was. the X and the O were switched? We talked about that uh, when we were talking about God of War controls. Mm. Oh yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah. Well, those unaware, right? In Japan, and I think in other territories as well, but primarily in Japan, on a on the PlayStation controller, right? The O is to accept, and the X is to cancel, as opposed to here, where the X is to confirm and the O is to cancel, right? Now they have switched it over to the American way throughout all the PS5s. So X will be to confirm and O will will be to back out. Right. Um, this isn't really the biggest thing for us because, like, I mean, like, hey, like, it's not like we're, we're going to switch over. Like, we're just staying the same. But I just thought it was interesting and, like, more of like a, you know, I don't think this necessarily had to happen, per se. Like, I mean... Maybe if, I mean, the only way I see it being cool is if on day one, you can map and like switch those if you want to. Because I know on PlayStation 4, you can switch those if you want. On like any PlayStation console, there's a thing in the settings where you can flip X and O depending on your preference, right? Hmm. So I guess if they're saying, hey guys, out of the box, the standard is X to confirm, O to back out. But if you want to switch it over, you have the ability to do so. 
I would have no problem with that. But if they don't have the option to do so, I think that'd be a little bit wild. But what do you think? If you have any in-depth thoughts on X and O. <laughs> I, if you can't remap it, it's going to be really disorienting because I imagine if they switched X and O for us, I would make a lot of mistakes. Oh, I would be broken for a solid like week, right? Like, yeah. I, that would definitely be something that we had to learn for sure. And like, I don't know if it would take me that long because because that's how it is on the Switch. When you play on when you play on the Switch, right? The uh most right button is to confirm and the lower button is to back out. If I can I think that's it. I think it is on Switch. I could be wrong on that, but like I go fine like going from Switch to a PlayStation game, you know, and those controls are different. So I think maybe like I would adapt, but I don't know. I hope that you can still change it on day one to your preference. Hmm. I digress. I digress. Next up here, uh, Sony has big plans for PS5. They did some more projections and they have announced how many units that they plan to sell by the end of the fiscal year. So uh, it looks like here, I'll read here from Pushcart. Again, links below in the description to all of the stories. Sony is banking on some big PlayStation 5 sales in its first few months on the market as it aims to beat the PlayStation 4's first fiscal year. The company's current current gen console sold 7 million units from its launch in November, thir- in no- November 2013 through the end of March 2014, but we know from past records that the manufacturer may be planning to produce as many as 15 million next gen consoles by the end of its next fiscal year. The organization is hoping that it will build uh, a lot of goodwill with a strong launch lineup that it'll be able to sell through practically every unit in the manufacturers in its manufacturers for the foreseeable future. So they are looking to sell all 15 million of these things. While the PS4 only sold seven in that given time back in 2013. Do you think they can do it? Um, what are your thoughts? Within the first fiscal year? Yeah, so we are no. so we are talking November 2020 until like March 2021. No. Really? Yeah, no. I think they have a solid chance. I don't know if they will. I think they have a solid chance. I think I think there's a chance that it could happen. Like you, know? you have to think about it. Um there are a few factors and a few variables that come to mind immediately when thinking about 15 million consoles being sold worldwide. The, you have to think about the state of the global economy. Absolutely. You have to think about the launch lineup. And you have to think about people buying new desks because of how big this console is. <laughs> I want to see IKEA stock and see if it goes up. Uh, I'll, I'll check. I'll check. <laughs> Of people buying, you know, new places to put their consoles. New apartments. New yeah, yeah. Just just a whole <laughs> new building and the whole house. If someone moves out because they can't put their PS5, that's going to be hilarious. Um, <laughs> that's commitment. That's that's a level of commitment that I will never be able to understand. Yeah, but no, like, I'm a, I'm a Sony pony that is entirely too much. I... I'm literally on a podcast called Road to PS5, and I will not be buying a PS5 at launch. Mm. But I will. Don't you worry. You will. Guys. Yeah, so. And hey, if you ever want to come over and, you know, take a look at the old thing, you know, this this big boy, which we will talk about later on as well during during the teardown section, but you are free Ooh. to come, you know, see see the power of next gen at your fingertips, you know? You love to see it. Love to see it. But in our our very, very small sample size, that's still 50%. Mm-hmm. Which is what the PS4 sold. That was a very science science scientific breakdown. Scientific? I don't know. Sci- scientific? Scientific? Scientific is not a word. Yeah. No. Holy. Hey, Siri. Oh boy. I love Siri. Is sci is scientific a word? No. It's not. 
It is. It is? It is a word. It is a word. Cyan, scientific is a word. I got the Oxford Dictionary up, pulled up. Let's read the definition. It's an adjective. Oh, wait. Scientific. Wait. Scien science. Wait. Scientific. What the? Wait. What is that? So. There's scientific. Oh. Oh, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, scientific Scientifically. Scientific. Of relating to or based on science of the nature of science. I all I see is scientifically. I have lexico.com powered by Oxford, so I would count them as reputable. Scientific. I digress. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? So yeah, we Dang. will see how much the PS5 right, sells. That's that's you. Yeah, that's a point to you. Damn. <laughs> All right, then let's go. One for me. Let's go. I honestly didn't think that was a word. I when didn't. you questioned it, I was like, no way. I've never <laughs> heard of that word before. Okay, go off. Scientific. Science. Sci What's your favorite word in the uh, English language? Superior. I like catalyst. Catalyst is also. You ever heard of that Linkin Park song called The Catalyst? I believe so. It's a, it's, a, it's a great song. It was at the end of a Transformers movie. I think it was the second one. Who knows? Shout out to Michael Bay. Not really. Next up. <laughs> PS, <laughs> PS5's 3D audio is going to be a big feature with it, of course, with the dual sense controller, haptic feedback, all those buzzwords. 3D audio is not going to be for the upper tier echelon of PlayStation gamers, as the blog does indeed confirm. They say here that uh, you will be able to use it with, of course, the Pulse 3D wireless headset and, quote, with the headphones that many of you already own, either through USB connection to the console or by plugging your headphones into the DualSense wireless controller's 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So it looks like a lot of people are going to be able to experience 3D audio. You know what I'm saying? And they are working on a virtual 3D sound solution for standard TV speakers, they say, quote, we're also in the process of working on virtual surround sound through speakers that are built into TVs. Although TV speaker virtual surround sound won't be available on launch day for PS5, it's still a feature we are extremely excited about and our engineers are hard at work on bringing the PS5 in, sorry, are, are hard at work at bringing it to the PS5 in the future. There you go. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be for everyone. I'm excited. Excited. I think the main difference with, with, with 3D audio, I think from what I heard from someone, is that while surround sound is just like on your level plane, right? You know what I'm saying? How you, you can hear something from like behind you, back to the left, back to the right, whatever. It's still like in your like vertical height, if that makes sense. I think 3D audio is going to allow you to hear things like from up above you and like below you. You know what I'm saying? I think that's going to be... I think that's the difference with 3D audio. I'm not sure if that's true, but are you excited for uh, 3D audio? I am. When you eventually get a PS5? I'm, uh, with 3D audio, it just makes me think of like, you know, when back back before the, the dark times, when you would go to a movie and I would have like that surround sound like all around you, like a Harkins or something. Oh, around. Yeah. You. So it's like thinking about like that with like, PS5, like you know how you can rent, uh, like a like a theater for like a hundred dollars an hour, and play games. Yes. Imagine like PS or something like I don't know, like Miles Morales or something. Dude, that seems like a steal. Yeah, hundred dollars an hour isn't bad. <laughs> you, hey, I, I mean, just just one hour. That's like, oh, that sounds great. Yeah. For a, for a, for a, for a, for a hundred bucks in a theater by myself, playing Miles Morales. Come on. Because, and then on top of that, Miles Morales is pretty short. So, what? Let's say, like, at max is what, like a 10 hour game? Okay, that's a grand. I don't, I, I don't know if that's good. I'm not sure if that's good. Um, I don't know. I've always wanted to play, like, a fighting game in a movie theater. That'd be fun. That would be so fun. Someday. Someday. Some, someday. But I'm excited for 3D, for 3D audio um, now a lot more because it definitely like like they said is for a lot more people and virtually everyone you know that like has a headset with a 3d not not 3D, 
3.5 millimeter jack, which is very much a common occurrence in the world. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's gonna be cool that they have what what sounded like a buzzword that was like only for like the like only the super hardcore could really have a headset that does 3D audio. Now it sounds like it's for the masses, and I think that's a benefit. Mm -hmm. overall. So really cool for that. What's also in the masses in terms of size and price is indeed the first official compatible SSD is for the PS5. Did you take a look at this? So so this is definitely more in your wheelhouse in terms of, uh, I have heard of Western Digital before. You know, they make uh, PC parts and different stuff like that. I think they specialize in memory, I think. I'm not sure exactly. I'm sure you have more info on Western Digital as a company. Yeah, like storage. Uh, okay, right. They have officially unveiled their first MVME SSDs for the PlayStation 5. Oh. Uh, and we got some pricing here, all right? So they did say that the manufacturer did confirm that these SSDs um, can read at seven gigabytes a second and write at 4.1, and writes at 4.1 gigabytes a second. So these are speeds that will be compatible for the PlayStation 5. Um, just as a disclaimer, guys, I would not buy any old SSD for your PS5. I would wait until Sony officially confirms which ones are good. But this one seems to be good uh, for the PS5, even though Sony hasn't officially said, yes, these will work. The These should work with the PS5. I'm going to wait still. I'm going to wait before I buy any type of SSD until Sony says so. Um, which I think definitely, like a lot of you should, but just in case you want to jump the gun, I think these are going to be safe for it. Uh, but we got to look at these prices, my boy. So the 500 gigabyte SSD is going to be $150, right? We have a terabyte. Wait, what? It's a little pricey. It gets worse, my boy. It gets worse. <laughs> we got one terabyte at $230. So I think that's $20 above the Xbox... Uh, proprietary one as well you know what i'm saying right so that's quite interesting and then my pen just broke it's so interesting. and then we have the big boy the two terabyte ssd for the ps5 is going I, I, not not for from western digital is going to be 450 dollars that's a whole other ps5 that's literally you can legit buy another ps5 you're absolutely right that's probably with tax included as well. Hopefully. Wow. No, no, like, I mean, like, four, four forty nine is more expensive than buying a PS5 oh. digital edition. It also with doesn't tax come included. with a heat sink. Hmm? It doesn't come with a heat sink. For the SSD? Yeah. Does it need one? Eh, you know, just to be safe, but. Okay. Um, I the heat sink is 470 for the SSD? Yeah, the SSD 2 terabyte with a heatsink is 470. Hmm. Well, yeah, pretty pricey. I'm going to wait a little bit. I think I'm going to adopt what uh, you know, Broken Games HD has been has been spooming a lot. It runs out like, "Hey, listen guys, just let go. If you're not playing a game, let it go. You can download it again at another time. There's no need to have all these games on your console." For no reason that aren't getting played you know what i'm saying is it is it convenient yes but you can endure and move on from that so i think i'm gonna really adopt that philosophy when i get my ps5 especially because i have a digital edition but what are your thoughts these prices are are definitely high obviously i feel like they will go down in the future how you feeling um the prices are a little steep my i'm going to adopt the just let it go mentality is like if i'm done playing a game i'll just uninstall it if i want to replay it i'll reinstall it yeah yeah and then if you couple that with the wi-fi 6 card in the ps5 it looks like downloads in theory let's cross fingers hopefully will be a lot faster than than they are on ps4 you know what i'm saying yeah and of course that all depends on your connection at home mine i have a very good internet connection so We'll we'll see how it all goes if I really need some more storage. But I do plan on getting more more storage though for my PS5, nonetheless. But this first few months, you know, we're gonna have to adopt the mentality and just let it go. You know. So, there. But we did get Ragman. 
this week. The PS5 teardown. Did you see the full video? I did. This motherfucking console is a big boy. This thing is fucking huge. Like we all we all knew it was it was gonna be a big boy, right? But even when you pull up the link on Postgre, once again, once again, link below in the description. Once you pull up the link, right, and you see the freeze frame of the video, this is exactly what I keep pointing out to people: is that if you look at the PS5, right, next to this whole human, right, it is about, if not bigger, than this man's entire torso. Granted, I don't know how tall this man is. I don't know his exact dimensions you know what i'm saying but still that's a whole human like that's a man and the ps5's full frame is like almost as big if not bigger than this man's entire torso arachne how you feel about this big boy? i'm gonna have to get a i'm gonna have to buy a new desk i'm gonna need a new house i'm gonna need a loan i saw this video and i started to push over my setup once again I've been shifting my setup every day just to make sure that, hey, I'm going to have room for this piece on my desk. You know what I'm saying? I really do. I'm going to be not upset, but like, man, I'm going to have a dilemma if I can't fit the PS5 on my desk. You know what I'm saying? Um, just push everything else over. Yeah. I know I'll make room, but it is it is still big. We did get some really cool stuff here. Involving, of course, the face plates. So the two white plates on, on the PS5 will be removable. So those artists out there, you can feasibly spray paint your face plates on the PS5 and uh, put some really cool designs on there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's that's really neat. I'm like bouncing around the idea of doing that, but I don't think I will. I don't I don't think I will, but I'm bouncing around. But like I'm bouncing around the idea of that. Um, I think what I re remember most fondly is that big heat sink. I know you are a PC savant, right? How you feel about that heat sink? How you feel about them using liquid metal? What are your thoughts on that before we move on? Uh, I, th I think it'll work just fine, depending, like, considering the hardware that we have. Like, I, I don't imagine it's going to be the jet engine that the PS4 is in order to make sure that the console doesn't overheat. So I, I'm hopeful. I am optimistic about what will happen with the PS5. I don't know if this is just like fanboy conjecture, but I did hear a lot of people talk about how liquid metal is like, uh, like a, like a, like it's super unsafe or whatever. And this and the third, do you have any thoughts on that specifically? Or is that just all like hoopla? Hoopla, <laughs> hoopla. It is? No, no. I just was joking around with it. Um, <laughs> uh, my my basis on like my my knowledge regarding liquid metal is very sparse. I'll 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 be the first to admit. However, like I don't immediately see the uh, the safety concerns surrounding it because just 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 based on my very very limited knowledge on like liquid metal like it it's not like there's like as asbestos in it like uh, and what do you can you recall any of these safety concerns regarding liquid metal that you've read yeah like people were seeing it just like it has a high failure rate like it could cause extreme heats this on the third and like i don't know like it was just a lot of people saying that, like, you know, liquid metal is more of, like, an experimental way of cooling the system and not, or, like, a part of the, because I don't know, like, what exactly the liquid metal is cooling. I think the CPU, I don't even know. But, well, um... Which metal is it? Is it mercury, gallium? Um, I can scrub through and see if they say, um... Let me see what they say. Well... I know they say liquid metal, but like to answer your question, they have like specific things. So no, that's the R. That's something else. Nope. We got 16 gigs of memory. We know that. Uh, I'm having a little bit of problem. Oh, here we go. I got it. I got it. Okay, I got it. Hold on. Let me let me read this. So 
The PS5 you you utilizes liquid metal as the TIM to ensure long-term stable high cooling performance. I'm just reading off of the captions. We we have spent two years adopting and preparing this liquid metal cooling mechanism. Uh, it doesn't say which metal it is. It just says liquid metal hmm. on the actual video. Um, let's see. Various conceivable tests have been conducted during that. Yep. The, so they've tested a lot. Da, da, da. Um, I think that might be all. Yeah. Okay. That's that's all they said about the liquid metal. Then they went to the heat sink. So instead of grease, a metal that is liquefied by heat during operation of the semiconductor chip is used as a heat conductive material between the semiconductor chip and the radiator. If such a metal was used, the thermal resistance between the semiconductor chip and the radiator is lowered and the cooling performance of the semiconductor chip can be improved. It is a liquefied metal using an ultraviolet cured resin to ensure it doesn't leak into the rest of the components when heated. Uh, right. That's pretty solid. Right. He so gets a stamp of approval from our from our official PC guru. He gives it the old stamp of approval. That's that's pretty cool. Like, it it definitely sounds cool. I think it's really cool how it like liquefies under load and then solidifies when it's not. Yeah, like, that's cool as shit. Yeah, like uh, I know like gallium and mercury, like. I, I don't I think it was mercury gallium uh, I think it was Mer no it, it, it's gallium that like you can use to purify toxic water mm. just as a side tangent interesting um so very very interesting I think like like metals do have a uh, a difference in uh, heat conductivity so like that's really cool like that's uh that's very very interesting to hear about how they can use metals to uh to sp space out and disperse heat more efficiently so the console doesn't run too loud it uh, man i just hope we don't have i mean knock on wood i'm gonna we're gonna get a terminator knock. for four hundred dollars <laughs> like i was sitting on stream like yo the like ps5 is like a scientific breakthrough in technology like we're using like all these rare earth metals or whatever but um i do hope that everything goes according to plan you know what i'm saying like i hope that um and i believe them when they say that, hey we've done a lot of r d on liquid metal over the past two years you know what i'm saying like everything's gonna be fine right because like i think overall i feel like from a hardware perspective sony does a lot better at hardware manufacturing because they are one as opposed to microsoft you know what i'm saying who's not really like renowned in that avenue. You know what I'm saying? Like when you think back, even though it caused a lot of development issues, the PS3's cell processor was like a really big breakthrough. Like like that really did allow for a lot more um, complex aspects of games, even though it was super hard to develop for. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, I just hope everything goes cool. I, I hope it doesn't cool, no pun intended. I hope it doesn't like explode. <laughs> you know, right. if I play like Miles Ross for like more than like six hours, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's a Terminator. Yeah, like Let's see. Let's see, and with that fat heat sink, I think that'll also help a lot. I'm assuming, in terms of keeping the console cool and everything. So we will see. Now, there was a little update to trophies. Honestly, not the biggest deal in the world. I'm gonna run down really quickly. Right. So trophies, if you didn't before, it used to be level 1 to 99. You would get a level based on how many trophies you got, all that good stuff. Right. And also, of course, uh, gold, gold's way more than silver, that way more than bronze. And the ultimate, you know, like heavy trophy is, of course, a platinum. Um, and that's how you either had a liar, had a higher or lower score based on how many of those trophies that you got. Now, with the new trophy system, we now have a 1 to 999 scale for trophies, right? So, how it's going to break down is that bronze trophies, um, you... So, so bronze, silver, and gold have three different levels of tiers based off of every 100 bronze trophies uh, that you get, I think. Or, or that, like, is that, like, actual level, right? 
So uh, bronze is one through ninety nine. Uh, bronze then goes on to tier two, which is hundred through one ninety nine, and then two hundred through two ninety nine is the last bronze level of your overall trophy score, and then you go up to silver tier, which is three hundred through five ninety nine. Again, breaking up in one hundred increments. And then gold tier is 600 through 998. Again, breaking up at 100 tiers. Then you have 999, which is the platinum trophy level. So now everyone has a whole whole different score. I think mine went from level 16 or 17 to like 290 uh, is how mine changed over. And you guys should be seeing it already on your position network accounts. But what was your change in score, Ragnar? Uh, Do you remember what it was before? I think it was like 12 or 13 to uh, like 230. It's like, it just seems inflated. I don't understand why the, the change particularly. Yeah, um, honestly, I'm not really sure either. Like, and I don't think that's necessarily like a bad thing because like, it's not like you broke trophies, right? Like, yeah. you know, and I think what it's supposed to do, I think it's going to... I think he arbitrarily added more levels to trophies, right? Obviously, which thus will give someone the wantingness to like see that score rise. Cause like before the one through 99, like it was really hard to level up your trophy level. Like it, like it felt like it was a lot um, per level that definitely felt like the overall process, um, you know, was, was moving super slowly. So now I think that like, It'll probably take the same amount of time maybe to get to 99 or or whatever, but you're getting more progress and more tier, you know, leveling up as you get more trophies, if if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that's what it is. Like it's like a like it's like a facade of like you doing more progress. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. I suppose it is so. what it is. It is what it is. I, it's it's cool. I don't really care about trophies that much. That's just me, but I digress. And the last topic here, Rack Knight, the last one here, backwards compatibility has finally been laid out. It's it's done. It's it's, it's been out there. I'm going to read to you the PlayStation 4 games that will not work with PS5. These games represent the 1% of PS4 games that will not be playable on PlayStation 5 um, that, that they did talk about um, uh, recently. Jim Jim Ryan said 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 something about it. We're like, hey, ninety nine percent of of uh, games on PlayStation Four will work with PS Five. So here is the one percent that don't work. Are you ready? Yes. DWVR Afro Samurai Two Revenge of the Kuma Volume One TT Isle of Man Right on the Edge Two Just Deal with It Shadow Complex Remastered Robinson The Journey. We sing Hitman Go Definitive Edition, uh, Shadwen, and Joe's Diner. Do you care about any of these games? I don't give a shit. I, I, re yeah. I remember reading that list. I was like, damn, that's crazy. I don't care. Yeah. I think definitely the the biggest one on this list seems to be Hitman Go, which I think was definitely like a... That one was, was definitely a big game, you know, from Square Enix and everything. Um... But besides that, all these other games are just, you know, the bomb of the barrel, you know what I'm saying? Like, and no disrespect to the devs, whatever, but let's just keep it real. These games aren't really that popular, and, and they don't really that matter. And they don't really matter, you know but what I'm saying? You remember, like, when you go to Walmart as a kid and you see the bin of games, like, the that are, like, five bucks? Mm-hmm. Those are what these games are. Yes, yes. It's yes. like, I'd, I'd rummage through, and it's like, maybe I'll see something cool. But most of the time, I would not see something cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, there it is. And there's a full um, FAQ down uh, in the description that they posted up on the blog that really answers everything about backwards compatibility that we've been asking about. Uh, there's a few things that I want to highlight, but I won't read the whole thing. If you do want to, link below in the description. But... We do have the announcement of Boost Mode, which will be available for certain PS4 games that are playable on PS5, which again is 99% of them. So over 4,000 games on PS4 will be available to play on PS5 day one. Um, and a lot of them will take part of a Boost Mode, which essentially for me, 
at least the way I'm going to define it, which I think it what it is, is that if you have a game that has an uncapped frame rate but could only run at 30 frames on PS4, it'll take advantage of that untapped potential of that game because it's uncapped, and you may see six, and you may see like higher frame rates or smoother gameplay all around, right? And faster load times. So, an example that they gave was that Ghost of Tsushima will, will be running in 60 frames on PS5. I can't fucking wait for that, my boy. Are we going to play Legends? Yeah. Are we going to play Legends? Yeah, absolutely. I do I'm nothing sure anymore. Count. I do nothing anymore. I'm here all the time. Like, it's like <laughs> oh, you want to play Legends? Like, sure. I bet. GG. Good stuff, good stuff. So... Uh, we had that, and then um, they did uh, confirm. Okay, the the last thing I want to say is about game saves and how those will carry over to PS5. So so they so they did confirm that PS4 game saves can be brought over to PS5 in three different ways. Actually, four different ways technically. One way is through an external external USB storage, right? You can just copy them onto that storage. Just gonna plug in the PS5 and download it. Have a good time. Uh, number two you can use it through uh you you can connect both of the ps4 and the ps5 together with a lan cable and transfer data that way for your saves three you can upload to ps plus and download it in the cloud on ps5 and what's the fourth way i forgot i think those might be the only the only ways hmm. yeah yeah those are oh sorry the fourth way is over Wi-Fi too. So if you have like a local network, you can um, transfer it through the Wi-Fi network in your home and you can do it that way. So it is confirmed PS4 game saves will be transferable to consoles. They did note that if some games don't support this, it is a developer choice and not a issue of them not being able to, which is interesting. Just do uh, say the least. But there it is. There it is, Ragnar. Are you are you happy about all this? Does it tickle your fancy? What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I don't see anything wrong with it. Like it's it's a good time. Like nothing. I'm just glad we're um, putting a little initiative with um, backward compatibility because I know that's been a big issue for people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you care about it that much? Um, to a degree. Right. I, I obviously enjoy backwards compatibility, especially when I'm going to be buying a console and then I don't want to have to worry about setting up my PS4 or keeping it set up if I want to play games there. So I definitely appreciate being able to play these games on my PS5. But yeah. there are a few games that I have on a uh, disc, and only disc, but only a few because I bought the collector's edition, like Spider-Man. And Bloodborne. And are you uh, are you uh, hoping for that Bloodborne sixty frames? Uh, yeah, but it's like I won't be able to play those games on PS four on PS five if I buy the digital edition because I have them on disc. So I'd yeah. have to I'd have yeah. to rebuy a few games if I wanted to play them on PS five, which I don't have a problem with Spider Man PS like Spider Man Remastered to be on PS five, so I don't particularly care. And if uh, Bloodborne, if there's something there, I'll definitely pick it up. But hey, wait a minute. If you get the digital edition and you're a PS Plus subscriber, you could take advantage of that PlayStation Plus collection, which Bloodborne is on there. Digital. Then there you go. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Yo, they, 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 you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's why I was definitely sold on the digital was with that collection. Like, okay, cool. I'll have a... Um, the only games that were on the collection that I have physical are like Detroit, God of War, and Uncharted 4. And those all are on the uh, collection digitally through PlayStation Plus. So I'm all settled there. I'm all settled there. My my saves are now in the cloud on PS Plus. I just did I just did it this morning. I'm ready for next gen, baby. Let's do I'm it. Ready for it. I'm all set. But before we go to the next gen. We're, we're going to take the few last weeks of the PS4's main generation to look back on some PlayStation hardware. All right, Iraq name. Is that cool? Mm-hmm. Is all cool with you? Is all good? Cool. I'm good. Let's keep it popping. Did you ever own a PlayStation 1? I did not. 
You did not? Okay. I did, but I was entirely too young to remember it, right? Uh, definitely for me, my childhood console was the PS2, which we will talk about next week for sure, right? And the PS2 is very important in terms of PlayStation lineage and PlayStation history. But I did want to go over some interesting facts about the PlayStation 1. There's not a ton here, you know? We just got some, the, uh, re, the release date for the PS1, the redesigned release date, some specs that I really wanted you to read off because those are really funny to look at now in hindsight. Mm -hmm. Some sales figures, some top 10 games that sold, and 25 facts about the PlayStation 1 to kind of end off the discussion, right? So... Would you like to do a little popcorn style type thing to uh, go over the history of the PlayStation 1? And if so, if you agree to those terms, I will allow you to go first, good sir. I, I insist you you start us off. All right, all right, take it away. The PlayStation 1, Sony's first console, their first foyer into the games industry, into the game development side, all that good stuff, started in Japan on December 3rd, 1994, was the original release date. And then North America got it September 9th, 1995. So almost a full year later, right? They got it in the States September 9th, 1995. Europe got it September 29th, 1995. So 20 days after. And then Australia got it November 15th, 1995. So PS1 took almost a full year to be released worldwide. Right. Like, which, which is wild because I think that would never happen today. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I know the PS4 released a little bit later in Japan, which we will go over when we had the PS4 episode, but PS5 is only a week in between all the other territories. Um, but that's something that you, like, really don't see anymore, and that's really interesting that it took that long to get to all different territories and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Yeah. And there was also the, uh, the Slim model, which was released July 7th. I said 2020. <laughs> It's not 2020. <laughs> Whatever year. It was July 7th. I think off memory. Oh, it was 2000. It was 2000. 2000. Yes. Which was actually, they put out that Slim model, actually, I think, a few months after they put out the PS2. Which was really weird, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a little strange. Yeah, yeah. But that's when it all came out. But tell us a little bit more. And I want you to really just break down <laughs> these specs on this Beast of a console back in 1994. Two megabytes of RAM. Two megabytes. One megabyte of video RAM. Yeah. Megabyte. Wow. Not gigabyte. Megabyte. A megabyte. That's we had some of the best games of like those generations. Like Resident Evil, Spyro, like just a few games that come to mind. Crash. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, on two, two megabytes RAM. of RAM. Yeah. Gran Turismo. Final Fantasy VII, a game that we love. You know, you know what's funny? Like thinking so, back on it, my computer, just my computer, thirty-two gigabytes, which is higher than the average, but nothing to like, you know, the like, whoa, thirty-two gigs, thirty-two gigabytes. Yeah, uh, and we went from two megabytes to gigabytes. It's just that's what it's just crazy because like nineteen ninety four wasn't that long ago. It, it really wasn't. I mean, it was almost 30 years ago. Oh, my God. It is almost 30 years ago. That's crazy. Time be... Time, time do be, be passing. Time, time be passing. For real, for real. <laughs> like, but, uh, yeah. I was negative four when the uh, PS1 came out. I was negative six. Six. Or negative five. Oh, yeah. Cause wait, you're a two thousands baby. I'm a two thousand baby. Holy shit, that is so. I can't even like fathom that. <laughs> you were born two I, years earlier. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I was born ninety eight, and that's just like two years prior. But like, yo, whenever I see someone write like, you know, zero one or like zero two for their birthday, I'm like, what the fuck? Well, like, you have wild. to, you know, it's a weird thought. It's like people born in two thousand two are eighteen. They're adults. Oh my god. There are kids born in 2007 that are 13. That's like wow. That's crazy. It's crazy too how like some people's like, you know, childhood console 
Like, I mean, like, like a, like a little, little kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, like, little kid console was the PS2, right? But some of them are, like, the PS4. Yeah. And it's like, damn, bro, you are so blessed because <laughs> these games are fire now. Um, oh, man. It's so spoiled. Yeah, no, like, um, someone I used to be close with, uh, their, uh, their nephew was born in 2000, like, 13 like after like like a little bit before the ps4 released and they're seven and it's like what the fuck that's crazy. dude aren't you like a fetus like aren't you like a, an infant it's like no that's seven. so they're seven years old in school is like what the fuck i don't like they're that. just crazy i don't like that <laughs> that like people be aging like people do be aging <laughs> that's wild did you see the resolution? It's 256 by 224 uh, up to a measly 640 by ooh, 40. 640 by 40. So the, ooh. So the highest re- resolution you can output out of PS1 is 480p. Not even. It's 480 interlace. It's 480i. That's wild. It's You know what's funny? Like so. This resolution back in the day was like, ooh, like, look at that. Yeah, people were like, oh my god, like, uh, it's man, like bro, that shit like 4K. It's like, if you made me, like, if it's like, oh, you can watch the show at 640 by 40, it's like, wow, I'm not going to watch the show. <laughs> I forgot, I know Avatar on Netflix, the original Avatar, The Last Airbender, not, not like, Legend of Korra, um, is in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, but I forgot what resolution that show is. I think it's 720. It, most shows on Netflix are around like 720, like 1080. It's like that specific one because it does have like the like black bars on the side because yeah. it's a four by three aspect ratio. Yeah, um, it wasn't in the widescreen era, but I yeah, that's a yeah. no, 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 no. Like I've been I rewatching feel like that CPU. Ooh. I like just one one more quick reference on no, resolution. Please, yeah. Like I've been watching, uh, like, Batman the animated series, mm-hmm. and one of the uh, resolution options is like three twelve p. It's like this is filth, and it's like then when you then when you upscale it to like ten eighty, it's like what? Like people, how how did people live like this? It's crazy, man. It's crazy, man. I still remember when, like, do you remember when, like, the local channels in Arizona, like, switched to HD? Do you remember that? Vaguely. So, like, vaguely. I was yeah, I, I was young. I remember my parents, like, low-key stressing about it. Low-key, right? And they said for, like, six months leading up that, hey, guys, at the end of the year, you are going to have to get new hardware to be able to view the local news because we are going to a high definition standard at uh, this and the third right hmm. it was wild it was it was a uh, yeah like I, I remember that shift like it was crazy and like it was like night and day i was like oh man like this is a lot better but i like this fmb back player 16.7 million colors on the ps1 nice hmm. Four thousand sprites Ooh. 180,000 polygons per second. Wow. Crazy. Got that sound. How you feel? Uh, the last thing I want to ask about is the CPU and the RAM. Sorry, no. The GPU and the CPU. Uh, let's let's take a look at it. Well, it doesn't really give any details on the GPU. The CPU, however, that's a, that's a beast. Ooh. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. 33 megahertz. <laughs> Fire. Let's go. Um, Next gen, baby. FMV playback. Um, you, shout out to Moore's Law. Shout out to computer, <laughs> oh, yeah. shout out to computer power doubling every 18 months. you love to see it. Like, love. Hold on. It, let me look up something real quick. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I, I remember, I remember reading about how many polygons Batman's model is in Arkham Knight. So let's let's oh, take, okay. let's uh, let's take a look at it. 
because the PS1 can render 180,000 polygons per second if it's textured, but 360,000 per second if it's flat shaded. Just, um, just, holy just, just shit. for reference. So, how many polygons does it take to render Batman from Batman Arkham? The Batmobile alone is 160 megabytes worth of polygons. Wow, wait, really? Yeah, just the Batmobile. Interesting. Huh. Um, huh. That'll fit in just about an Xbox 360 if it was the whole game. Just the Batmobile. Wait, what? Yeah. Um, God, give me a number. Stop talking about how impressive it is or whatever. Just give me a number. <laughs> wait, so if so, if they fit the bat, wait, re- can you break down that last thing you said about the, um, about the three sixty? So it's one hundred and sixty megabytes of memory, right, for just the map Batmobile. Okay, like. The, set, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 really reined in at what it hoped to achieve. However, they couldn't hope to run Arkham Knight. Like, not even just the Batmobile. Oh, wow. Okay, I see what you're saying. That's crazy. Like, that's crazy. Um, hmm. Come on, give me a number. Give him a number, website. Give him a number. I, I've checked like four different websites. Arkham City, uh, the Arkham uh, Harley Quinn's model in Arkham City, it was seventeen thousand polygons, just just her model. And, and then you have to think about the background and everything going on in the background. Right. Right. Oh, uh, my bad. Uh, I found the number, uh, one hundred and forty thousand polygons. One hundred forty thousand polygons for Batman in Batman Arkham Knight. Just Batman. Yeah, so the wow. That's crazy. Um he uh it was 480 and then was reduced to 140. It was 480 before? Yeah, before optimization. Oh my god, I want to see that 480,000 polygon Batman. That sounds crazy. It's, wow. Um Yeah, no. Some of these uh some of the models like lately have been getting like crazy detailed like even sonic and sonic unleashed was had a crazy amount of polygons like they had to build a whole new engine just for the game i think overall i think the best character model still i think like the ones that still impress me is like nathan drake or god of War, or kratos from god of war 2018 i think those character models are like insanely good looking you know but that's wild it Sonic Unleashed just for Sonic had um hold on where where is the number? He uh looks like fifty thousand polygons just for Sonic. A smooth blue hedgehog in two thousand eight. In two thousand eight? Yeah, just in two thousand eight. Yeah, so we've definitely come a long way. We have definitely, <laughs> definitely come a long way, which is very, very come a long way. Yeah, yeah. And if you didn't know, actually, the PlayStation One is the third best-selling con. Sorry, excuse me, is the third best-selling PlayStation console, and the fifth best-selling console of all time at 102 million units sold. You love to see it. You love to see it. You love to see it. And we do have a list of us of top 10 selling games. You can read that if you want, but next to it, I did put how many how many units they have sold right now. Um, I'm not sure if like that's counting other platforms. I'm pretty sure that's just count cla- just counting PS1 copies of this game. Like I assume Five Fantasy Seven has sold a lot more than just 10 million copies. Yeah, you know, over the course of being on you know PS2, PS3, PS4, blah, 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 you know. Yeah, but so, run it down for me. What's the top 10 best selling games on PlayStation? Gran Turismo at 10.8 million, uh, FF7 at just over 10 million, Gran Turismo 2 at 9.3, FF8 at 8.6, Tekken 3 at 8.3, 
Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone at eight million. Uh, Tomb Raider at s- Harry Potter be Tomb Raider uh, at seven point one. Isn't it the Sorcerer's Stone? I don't like Harry Potter, but isn't it the Sorcerer's Stone? I think there are, there are two stones, perhaps. Oh, oh okay. Um. Per, I I just the only thing I remember from Philosopher's Stone is Hagrid. Like the meme of like Hagrid's face. Yes. Yeah, that's always funny. Um, Crash, Crash One at six point eight two, Tomb Raider two at six point eight, and MGS at six million. How did Harry Potter beat Tomb Raider? <laughs> My thought is, how did Harry Potter beat like Metal Gear Solid? Like, I feel like Metal Gear so- wasn't that like a huge game on PS. I mean. It's the 10th best-selling game, so like I know it was a huge game, but I thought that he, I, I thought Metal Gear Solid would be a little bit higher on the list. If you be if you told me to like like bet is like is Harry like I don't know like a like a guess like is Harry Potter on the top 10 best-selling games of the PS1? I was like fuck no. Yeah, I would have said no as well. Like that's that's very interesting. Like, like I, I, I did not because. I feel like I rarely hear this game get get talked about. I think Christian streamed this game this year. I'm pretty sure he did. I think he did. I know he's. I, I know he streamed a Harry Potter game on PS1, and it could very much well be this one right here. But we see some classics here that are still around today. Gran Turismo, of course, Final Fantasy. We see Tomb Raider, Crash Bandicoot with Crash Forge coming out. We see Metal Gear, you know what I'm saying? So Tekken as well is still around here and there. Um, and we just got a new Harry Potter game as well. Get announced. So. Pretty cool that pretty much all these IPs are still alive in some shape, form, or fashion today. You know? But, of course, with the uh, PlayStation turning 25, for both the U.S. and Japan as well, I figured I'd pull up. Just some facts that we can just rattle off real, real quick and talk if we want to talk about it or whatever. But there's some, there, there's some cool stuff here that, uh, if you want, we can go popcorn style on. But I think there's a lot of cool stuff that we could talk about here to end out the episode. Going over the history of PS1, so I'll start off. <clears throat> it was also the sorry, oh wait, did I skip? No, I didn't. It was the first home console to surpass a hundred and million units sold globally. So this was big because, you know, before Sony came on the scene, there was Sega. There was, of course, Nintendo still killing it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and Sony just kind of just came out of nowhere and blew them out of the water and did the first 100 million unit, uh, you know, selling console ever, which is cool. Wild. Um, production for the PS1 ceased in 2004, giving it a decade on store shelves. I like the word ceased. Like, it was ceased. very dramatic. It does. It does, like, for real. But damn, for a whole decade, it was on shelf. That's wild. That's crazy. Because I know the PS3 ended, ended production somewhat recently. I think it was back in, like, 2015, I think? Or 2016? Something like that? Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Even though production of the console stopped in 2004, games for the system were available until 2006. So they had games coming out for this console 12 years after after it released and two years after it was off the market in terms of production, which is why. So, Gran Turismo. Oh, I skipped three. Yeah, we yeah. skipped that one. Yeah, Gran Turismo. Uh, the original controller that launched with the console didn't have analog sticks. Disgusting. It was a it was a feature late, added later and dubbed the DualShock controller. So I do have right next to me an unboxed PlayStation Classic Ooh. that I am gonna practice my unboxing, uh, you know, video format and like how to edit that and how to shoot that uh, for for when we get the PS5 in. I want to unbox the PS1 at some point, so y'all will see that soon. But it's of course the PlayStation Classic, so the little mini PS1. Um, and it has the controller with no analog sticks. So I am eager to hold that and see how it feels. Cause I bet that'd be very weird. 
Um, but yeah. So speaking of the controller, each of each of the symbols on the controller, the O, triangle, X, and square, all all represent a function. Triangle refers to a viewpoint, the direction in which one is headed. The square refers to a piece of paper, representing me what? What? The square re refers to a piece of paper representing the menus. O and X represent yes and no. For the longest time, people referred X as X, but it is officially the cross button. Yeah, I know people say it's cross. I'm gonna say X. So. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't care. It's X. I didn't realize that there was a, that much meaning behind the symbols of like square is like for menus and triangle is for like the direction that your viewpoint is and then I get O and X to confirm and cancel but very very interesting stuff very mm -hmm. very interesting the original PS1 discs have a black base but there was no special value or feature to the black base of the disc yeah that's just a small just a small detail a black base huh? at E3 1995 Sony went on stage and won the show with one word 299 the Sega Saturn went on sale at three ninety nine, and you know which console ended up winning in space of households around the world. The hundred price difference was one of the main reasons why the oh yep, so the, just going some history there that also the hundred dollar price difference was one of the reasons why PS four did so successful against Xbox One amongst uh, uh, amongst a bunch of other things. But uh, I did recently see this um, in the documentary that I watched. Oh, oh, it's called Console Wars. Uh, it's on CBS All Access, and there's a free trial if you want to watch it. It tells a little bit of the story behind Sega and and Nintendo and their battle and all that. And they actually show this moment in the documentary when Sony said, "Hey, two ninety nine, and that's it for the PlayStation One." It was super cool, super cool. But uh, but yeah, so. Definitely very, very cool to see. Uh, I'm a huge Sonic fan, so, like, mm -hmm. especially growing up. Uh, so I remember doing a lot of reading on the Sega Saturn and, like, Sonic history. Sega Saturn, it had a rough life. It was, it was one of the last nails in Sega's coffin when it came to consoles. Shout out to Sonic Extreme. Some of you might know what that is some of you won't I'm not going to explain it <laughs> at E3 1995 Sony went on stage and oh wait I can't read <laughs> I'm dumb uh, I was like wait what is like, we're, we're running it back um, PlayStation kicked up a trend of a slim version of the console the PS1 saw changes over the years rearranging and removing some IO ports and chips apart from the original size in the year 2000 a smaller slim version of the console was launched we have seen that same trend with the PS2, 3, and 4. Other console makers have also followed this trend. Yeah, I didn't realize that it was it was PlayStation that originally started this like kicked it trend off. of like, yeah, yeah, of like releasing slim models of the same console as the generation goes on. Um, so that's 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 really neat. You know, that's 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 uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean. I just didn't know that at all. That like, the PS One was was the first console, to, first console console to do it. But I digress. The CD was one of the biggest advantages that the PS One had over the competition. While the content on the cartridge loaded faster on the console, the CD gave gave developers a whopping six hundred wow a whopping six hundred and fifty megabytes of space. May not look like a lot today, but back in the day, a game cartridge had roughly twelve to fifteen megabytes of space. Despite this, Metal Gear Solid was a two-disc game. What? So they went from like 12 to 15 megabytes up to 650 with the CD, but Metal Gear Solid was still on two discs? Like, so, like that's how with, big that game was still? Same with Classic FF7. Oh, really? That was yeah. on two discs as well? I believe so, yes. Wow. Look at that. Oh, wow. speaking of which, the CD was also one of the reasons why a franchise like Final Fantasy jumped the ship from Nintendo to Sony. Yes, I do remember reading that during Road to Final Fantasy VII um, Remake, where we talked about um, how, you know, one of the big reasons why 
Square, uh, what was it called before? Squaresoft went with Sony with, with the PlayStation for Final Fantasy VII was, of course, that, that, that space difference and all that good stuff. So, pretty cool right there. Crash Bandicoot became the PlayStation's mascot. While Sony had a decent portfolio of performing games with cute characters, including Spyro the Dragon, it was Crash Bandicoot that became the defining platforming game, making the Bandicoot the official mascot of the console. Really cool. Really, really cool. Shout, shout, shout out to Bandicoot. The Bandicoot is sick. The PS1 was, or the PS1 was a the great... The PS1. The PS1 was a great CD player. The PS1 played audio CDs with high fidelity, making a great choice for those looking for a music CD player. Sony continued this tradition with the PS2, which is a great DVD player, and the PS3, which was one of the cheapest Blu-ray players at the time, despite the console launching at a premium price. Yeah, this is a really interesting thing about PS1, 2, and 3, is that they all were... uh, Of course, number one, the main format was, of course, gaming, right? And, like, playing games and everything. But PS1 being a great CD player, PS2 being the cheapest DVD player you can buy on the market, and PS3 being, once again, the cheapest Blu-ray player on the market as well like that's a really interesting thing and like it's something that the ps4 didn't have which i always thought was pretty interesting that the ps4 didn't have like it wasn't the cheapest 4k blu-ray player which i think that's what it would have been if they did follow this follow this lineage again um but for some reason even with the pro we we never got a 4k uh blu-ray player until ps5 so that's a bit interesting, but I digress. Ken Kudaragi is the father of the PlayStation. He was instrumental in the development of PS2 and PS3. So I forget the full background behind this guy. Do you know? I'll, I'll start with I don't know if you might. I don't know. Do you? Uh, not particularly, no. I know he's very, very important for a lot of reasons that I wish I went back and did a little more research on this gentleman, but I have heard his name as being the father of PlayStation, but I digress. Oh, let's talk about some memory cards, baby. Hmm. What do we got? The PlayStation 1 needed a memory card to save your progress. A memory card was 128 kilobytes in space and had 15 blocks of memory. The PS2 upgraded the capacity of the memory card to 8 megabytes. I remember when I was a when I was young, the GameCube because that was my baby console when I was young, was the mm. GameCube. So, I remember having a, like, not a drawer, but, like, a little container full of memory cards. Like, I had, like, PlayStation memory cards. I had GameCube memory cards. I had a lot of memory cards. Like, like my sister and I filled up those things really quick so now it's funny to say oh eight megabytes that's crazy yeah i sorry sorry sorry. oh no yeah so it's like i (laughs) you go you go no i swear to god go i thought you said no i'm fine i was on my thought i swear to god i'm gonna shut up and you're gonna talk all i was gonna say is like I was like, wow, that's crazy. I have a two terabyte hard drive, and even that's... Kind of... Oh, no, actually, no, I had a two terabyte hard drive. And I was like, you know, it's kind of pushing it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so I upgraded to eight terabytes. You have eight terabytes? Yes, I have eight terabytes. God damn, my boy, shoot. I have, a, I have a three terabyte external hard drive, but my Mac has, like, 256 in the SSD. So I just keep applications on that. Keep all my data on the hard drive. Um, but wow. Yeah, 500 uh, gigabyte SSD, 8 terabyte hard drive. I always recall looking at my PS2 memory card and like really uh, working with that and like clearing space off it. Da, da, da. Like, I, I definitely remember the PS2 memory card of 8 megabytes, but 128 kilobytes for the PS1 memory card is so insanely small. Like, that is... 8 megabytes is already... Guys, it's literally... 8 megabytes is an eighth of a gigabyte. No, it's not. It's... No, it's... It's it's 8 over a 1,000. Right? So, if 
a gigabyte is a thousand megabytes take eight out of those thousand and that's the ps2 memory card that is insane and the same thing with the uh kilobytes like one megabyte is a thousand kilobytes so take 128 of those kilobytes you get what the ps1 was just for just for uh you know reference how small we're talking here that's wild the PS1 saw its share of rare games and noteworthy one is Elemental Gearbolt's Assassin's Case. The game was a light gun shooter and came in a in a special briefcase with a gold-plated gun controller accessory. As for its rarity, only 50 copies of the game were made. All of these copies were given away at E3 1999. What? The fuck? Wow. Wow came in a special briefcase with i want to you know what while you read the next one i kind of want to look it up and see and see how this thing works there there's only 50 of these i wonder how much they went for hmm. at the time at the end of the ps1's life 1300 games were released for the console 1300 1300 nice one must remember that the same game may have a different name in a different country like resident evil was biohazard and so so on and so forth. Yeah. 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 I'm looking at this case. Very interesting. It does look like a nice brief briefcase as well. I'll uh, put it right here in the Discord. So you can, uh, take a look at that thing. But that is, and I implore everyone to also go check it out online. Ooh. Google search that thing. But yeah, that that's what it was. There was 50 of these Elemental Gearbolt Assassin's case uh, given out. Uh, the 399 that's that, that, that's pretty wild and i'll just read the two last ones here while well, we're you know just 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 reading the last two bits about ps1 the final licensed playstation game to release in north america was fifa football 2005 the game was released in 2004 so that was the last uh like licensed playstation game to to release on the ps1 and lastly here the ps1 dualshock controller so the one with the a analog sticks did work with ps2 so there you go. Get to keep your controllers, use them again on PS2, all that good stuff. So I mean, hey, you know what? I'm just I'm I'm very, you know, glad that Sony stepped into the gaming space because who knows where I would have been without the PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So shout shout out to the PS1. I don't have that many fond memories of the PS1, but I'm looking at one right here next to me on the floor of PlayStation Classic and uh I'm happy that Sony actually got into the gaming business. And uh, the rest is history. The rest Do you have any closing thoughts about PS1 or X? I don't have a personal connection with the PlayStation 1 because I am a baby. Mm. So, good console. Paved the way for a lot of big steps in the gaming industry. And uh, I'm grateful Sony jumped in on all that because it got us a lot of amazing stories. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, where can the people find you? I am on the PlayStation Source Discord under the same name. I am on Twitter at Orly underscore Macias, which will both be in the description. And that's about it for me. And of course, you can follow us here on YouTube.com slash PlayStation Source, as well as our links down below in the description, because this has been The Road to PS5, the weekly podcast series about any and all things PS5 as we head towards the release of the PlayStation 5. You can catch the show here on YouTube.com slash PlayStation Source as well as your, your favorite podcast service every Sunday by hitting the anchor link down below to find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, and any other major podcast service or by just searching PlayStation Source Podcast Feed to support the show. You can, of course, like and subscribe as well as become a member of the channel by hitting the join button or the link in the description. The Prince tier and the King tiers are $1 and $5 re, respectively, giving you access to different channel badges, emotes, as well as shout outs and all PSS content, just like the homies, Kalo Kaiser and Bat. Just kidding, those are the wrong list. I'm gonna pull up the edited list. Here we go Owen, Arachnite, Chungi, Caleb, Kaiser, and the homie Tapiwa Musa, aka Tap. Follow us on other platforms such as Discord, Twitter, or down below in the description. Thank you all for watching, and as always, greatness, greatness awaits. awaits. Uh, I was early that time.
It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I'll see y'all next week. See you.